Um, so this article is titled, How Can You Speak in Tongues and Not Speak to Your Neighbor? 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, 21, and I be, Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For, for whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. We must be we must be sure uh, that as disciples of Christ, that we are doing our duty to be Christ-like at all times. And this duty includes being loving, compassionate, long-suffering towards others. And too often do we proclaim to be ambassadors of, uh, be ambassadors of Christ, but fail to be active listeners and um, sympathetic towards our brothers and sisters in Christ, and more importantly, sinners. Remember, Christ came back for sinners, not for the righteous. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse uh, 1, NIV. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am not a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I have nothing. But do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophes- prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of a child, childhood of my childhood behind me. For now, who see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, for the greatest of these love. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, um, just really just having love and, and, uh, you know, to be Christ-like, even as we interact with sinners, you know, we definitely have to be led by um, the Spirit of God, you know, not to the point where we're condoning sin because that's never, um, you know, the will of God. But we need to be in a, in, in a position uh, to reach sinners um, in the way that um, God would mean for us to, um, to, 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 you know, to, to draw them nigh. Um, not with sugar coating and not with lying, but with the truth and and conviction um, from the Holy Spirit. But that's love, you know. Is is not love to sweep dirt under the car- under the carpet under the rug for someone? Um, is love to to tell the truth to to share the word of God with someone? Um, so that um their hearts may be just pricked, um, and that they may uh, desire to seek truth. So that's the love. I don't mean love um as in just condoning um their sins or wrongdoing, but um to love with the with the love of Christ um that you wouldn't want to see someone go to hell as as God leads of course and I want to share, share a story um there's a female who attends my home college and you know for the past three years I mean she was just kind of known as one of the serious Christ followers in our female population you know she was one of the female kind of like you know oh yeah you know she's a Christian you know hey go to her if you have any questions and um as a new believer, I didn't necessarily wear a "I serve Jesus" sign on my shirt or anything like that. But um, when my when the relationship, you know, with Christ came up, I was more than happy um, to share the story about how I uh, gained salvation with with anyone. Um, so um, this female and I, we would just bump into each other all of the time. So one day, I decided to say hi to her. Uh, 
But to my surprise, she walked right by me as if I, I wasn't even there. So I didn't think much of it. Like, you know, hey, she, you know, maybe she didn't see me. I mean, no biggie. Maybe she was busy. You know, I'm not going to take it personal. But till, until it became a constant pattern. I mean, you know, me uh, taking an initiative to say hello and then her uh, looking down or looking away, trying to avoid say hello back. So about a month later, um, we had both ended up, um, we kind of happened to be at a Christian event on campus. And she made a comment along the lines of, you know, hey, you know, I didn't know that you were a believer. And I couldn't help but think about how fake I thought she was. And, you know, at that point, she just rushes to greet me. You know, after, you know, we had both kind of been um, at the Christian event. I mean, she's been speaking to me ever since. And I just asked God to help me um, to be able to say hello with the love of Christ. Uh, because why did I have to be a believer for her to speak to me? What if I was still a sinner, just desperately in need of hearing the gospel? What what if I needed help? What if I wanted to to have a Bible study or just something like that? Or um, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just um, it just it just kind of just seems so fake to me, um, that that she didn't want she just could just just uh didn't show any interest of even just saying hello. Because she didn't know that I was a believer. Um, and I'm not bashing her or anything like that. This is merely an example of some things that we all have been guilty of, of doing. Um, so that's all. It's nothing like that. Um, you know, she and I, you know, we're on speaking terms. Uh, but this is just an example for this. So, you know, I don't want to make it seem like I'm bashing her or anything like that. Um, but, you know, so even as I think about it, I just think, you know, what if I was just still a lost soul? And uh, since her name was just kind of so big on the campus, what if I had been kind of wanting to build a friendship that, that maybe we could just go over scripture? You know, just things like that. So anyway, um, Christian cliques, uh, you know, formed only around believers are not Christ-like. Cliques, cliques, they stunt spiritual growth, and furthermore, they ignore the purpose Um of the kingdom's business because as servants of God we are supposed to be the light of the world and the salt that preserves it and the salt that preserves the earth but we cannot reach our full potential or we are not effectively engaging in healthy and godly relationship with others because a pure and a genuine because a pure and, and genuine relationship with our neighbors must be found in love first Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 NIV love is patient love is kind it does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Because the Bible give, gives us specific instructions about how to be Christ-like and the characteristics we, we ought to obtain. Um, and, and while I usually speak to people who are close enough to hear me, God showed me something else about myself. He showed me that as many people as I talk with, that I sometimes didn't mention him at all. I mean, for him to be my everything, uh, he ought to come up, I mean, at least every now and again, right? So basically, God was telling me that there shouldn't be a question about whether I serve him or not, as my actions and conversation ought to be a reflection of him. So the next day, God led me to think about, um, like, why I had, like, received wisdom, but yet I didn't seek to share with others. Why, why, why wasn't, I sharing what I knew and um, it was just kind of like having this knowledge having this wisdom and just kind of sitting on it just for myself I mean having it and you know um, keeping it all to myself so from that day on I just kind of realized how silly that was how foolish that was so from that day on I decided to go forth and spread the gospel and I wanted to share another story um, my freshman year in college there was a, a cafeteria worker um, who stood who stood out to me. It's hard to explain, but um, she appeared to have had um, some rough circumstances. Um, but regardless, she always appeared to be so peaceful. When I saw her, and at my school, uh, at least, we don't spend 
too much time interacting with workers who aren't professors. So I couldn't figure out why I kept feeling led to talk with her, but, you know, then I was unsaved. So I just kind of brushed the idea off, and I forgot about it. And um, the end of freshman year, uh, you know, the end of freshman year came, and I felt led to give this cafeteria worker some cards with scriptures on them. Um, they had been passed down to me from my grandmother, um, who died from breast cancer. She was a Christian, and she had just uh, cards with scriptures on them um, for kind of like every day of the year. Um, and I kept telling myself that I would give the lady the cards. But before I knew it, the semester was over and the lady was gone. And I couldn't figure out why I wanted to give her the cards. So I didn't really, you know, try to figure out where she was. Um, And I, be I began to question. Like I said, I couldn't even figure out, you know, why I kept, you know, feeling like to talk with this lady or anything like that. So I began to even question if I was just having my just kind of caught up in my feelings moment. Um, moments, you know, like, you know, was I, did I feel bad because it seemed like she was having unfavorable circumstances or, you know, whatever. I wasn't, um, really sure, but I didn't see this woman again until my first semester of my junior year. And it was just interesting because I switched buildings. We have two cafeterias on campus and I switched buildings and she switched cafeterias. And the first cafeteria that I had met her in, I had no longer... Uh, go to that cafeteria anymore because I mean I don't have to there's one in uh, my suite bu my building now um, but she was now working in the suites um, so I thought that was interesting and so at some point um, you know I, I sparked up uh, a conversation with the lady <laughs> pretty much only for her to tell me that she didn't remember me so as we continued to talk she told me about some issues she had been experiencing, experiencing, so I decided to print out some of these articles for her. And I hadn't really told her, um, I hadn't told her I was an author for a while, um, and until she began to ask me about more articles. And I didn't mention being an author because, I mean, I just really don't feel like that's important. Um, but once I did tell her, I opened the door um, for us to talk about Christianity more because she thought I was just finding stuff online and just giving it to her. So... She began to, you know, ask for more and, you know, where can she get them from and, you know, who was the writer, just things like that. Um, but she thought I was just kind of surfing online and just giving her information. But once she realized that I was the author, um, she really wanted to engage in conversation um, about specifics, uh, about issues that she was facing. So after that moment, we would meet every day in the cafeteria to talk about God. And she would come over to me uh, at the table where I was at, just acting like she would clean the table while I would read scripture um, to her. And I would print articles as often as I could. And I gave them to her so that she could read them. On the bus going home or during her lunch break, I would print them out and give them to her. She would put it in her pocket and, um, you know, just read them. Every day I would kind of see her just reading them um, on her lunch break uh, when she just kind of had downtime. And uh, I, I prayed with her um, for her and her family Whenever her supervisor <laughs> was busy doing something else, whenever she would say, hey, you know, can we pray? I have a minute or two. I said, sure. We would say a quick prayer. She would get back to work. I would finish eating. Or, you know, she would get back to work, and I would go back to my room to go do homework. But before I knew it, she was waiting for me. When I would go to the cafeteria, she would be waiting for me, just excited to talk about the goodness of the Lord. And it was an amazing feeling. To be used by God as only a 20-year-old for a woman who was well in her 40s. I would come to the cafeteria and she would be waiting for me. Waiting in the cafeteria. Hey, you know, saying, hey, how was your day? You know, what's new? Like, you know, it was just all this excitement. And then before I knew it, her supervisor was coming up to me stating that she wanted what I had. That she wanted salvation. So apparently some of the articles I had given her. She had left some of them in the cafeteria, and other workers began to read them, and one of them being her supervisor. And her supervisor uh, said that she was unable to receive um, salvation uh, because she wasn't a part of a church. And I told her, whenever she's ready, as the Lord leads, we can pray right there in the cafeteria. Christ doesn't have an ordained place for us to accept him as our Lord and Savior. I told her, if she wants salvation, as the Lord leads, we can pray right now. We don't have to wait another second, another minute. So as the semester got closer to ending, um, prayer 
with the camp with the uh, lady in the cafeteria. Um, the cafeteria worker became regular a regular part of our lives. You know, she even shared with me um her most personal her most personal and difficult struggles as I would go home and pray. I would pray for her and bring back scriptures that God put on my heart to share with her. And guess what? The last day of classes, God reminded me to give her the cards with the scriptures on them. And I, I told her, because uh, even when we would talk, I would think about freshman year and how I just kept feeling that something, something was special about her. Like, I felt just, you know, it's hard to explain. But the last day, I told her that even freshman year, um, that I, I wasn't saved. But um, I had then felt led to share, give give cards to her. And, and I, so I ran upstairs. Um, and I got the cards and I just asked God to give me a mind, uh, to give the verses, the scriptures, um, to, to the woman that, that he knew, only he knew she would be able to receive. And when I came back and I gave the cards to her, um, she looked at me, she's trying to hold back tears and she hugged me for what felt like three hours. I mean, I'm sure it was only like one or two minutes, but it felt like just hours as she was just sharing her gratitude so there i was in the middle of the cafeteria while students were trying to figure out what was going on and i just stood there hugging a woman who had known christ at a very young age but who had gotten um who had given up after being trampled by every sin you could think of but the light of christ that dwells within me was able to draw her nigh leading her to come back to her father she went from referencing god as merely a memory to being active in church, reading her Bible regularly, praying, fasting, and seeking fellowship with other believers. And I mean, all this is so wonderful that it makes me wonder, what if I didn't speak to my neighbor? 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14, uh, verse 22 to 35 NIV, tongues then are a sign, not for believers, but for unbelievers. Prophecy. However, it's not for unbelievers, but for believers. So if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and acquirers or unbelievers come in, they will not say that they are not out of their, out of their mind. But if an unbeliever or an inquirer inquir comes in while everyone is prophes prophesying, they are convicted of, the, of sin and are brought under judgment by all. And the secrets of their hearts are laid bare. So they will fall down and worship God exclaiming god is really among you hmm we cannot gain spiritual gifts and forget the true purpose of our existence we are instructed to yield unto the lord and to humble our flesh ultimately becoming vessels and full property of the lord as vessels of christ we need to be examples because someone is always watching someone is always and in, in dire need to hear the gospel. People are waiting. God hears the cries of his people. People are waiting to just talk about the goodness of, of Christ. And so I say all of this to say um, to love the Lord is to also love your neighbor.